Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Monday, February 3rd. I'm Wayne Pratt. Ahead, Illinois' new cannabis legislation law will eventually wipe clean thousands of criminal histories. I want to be able to provide for my family, and I want to be able to help my family. You know, it's, I've been held back for ever. But not everyone with a cannabis offense will get a fresh start. We'll have that story in just a few minutes. First, the headlines. The St. Louis Army Corps of Engineers District is developing a strategy to help cities and counties along the lower Merrimack River to reduce their flood risk. As St. Louis Public Radio's Eli Chen reports, local governments will decide this spring if they want to adopt the Corps' recommendations. Cities like Eureka and Sunset Hills have dealt with three record floods in just the last five years. The Corps analyzed flood risk in areas along the lower Merrimack River and recommended that governments do things like buy frequently flooded properties or protect wetlands in the floodplain to address flooding in high-risk areas. David Stokes directs environmental nonprofit Great Rivers Habitat Alliance. He says he expects local governments to use some of these strategies, but doubts they'll do enough. I think the Corps is putting a lot of faith in the cities of the St. Louis region to do the right thing, and I think in that respect... I would, I would expect we'll all be sorely disappointed. The next public meeting to discuss the Corps' plan is at Arnold City Hall on Wednesday evening. I'm Eli Chen, St. Louis Public Radio. Pinnacle Regional Hospital in Boonville recently became the seventh rural hospital to close in Missouri since 2010. The National Rural Hospital Association says expanding Medicaid could reduce closures. Brock Slaybaugh is the association's vice president. I would say that it's part of the solution. I don't think it's the entire solution. You can reduce the chances of closure by 62% uh, merely by expanding uh, Medicaid in a state. Slaybaugh says Illinois, a state that did expand Medicaid as part of the Affordable Care Act in 2014, had only two rural hospitals close in the past decade. Governor Mike Parson and the Republican majority in Jefferson City oppose expansion of Medicaid, although the issue might go to voters this fall. Well, the party is well underway in Kansas City. The Chiefs are Super Bowl champions for the first time in 50 years. As NPR's Russell Lewis reports from Miami, where the Super Bowl game was held, Kansas City claimed the National Football League championship last night with a 31-20 victory over San Francisco. Kansas City quarterback Patrick Mahomes was unstoppable in the playoffs. Time and time again, he found a way to bring his team back from a deficit. Early on in the Super Bowl, the 49ers outplayed Kansas City on offense and defense, but it was not good enough. With just over six minutes left in the fourth quarter, the Chiefs were down 2010. It didn't seem to bother Mahomes. The Chiefs stormed back, scoring 21 unanswered points to stop the 49ers. It was the third time these playoffs that Mahomes engineered a double-digit comeback in a single postseason, the first time that's ever happened. Russell Lewis, NPR News. The victory parade in Kansas City for the Chiefs is set for Wednesday. Closing arguments take place today in Washington in the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. NPR's special coverage will begin at 10 this morning on the main signal of St. Louis Public Radio. Regular programming can be streamed at stlpublicradio.org. Under Illinois' new cannabis legalization law, thousands of people will see their criminal records cleared of some pot convictions and arrests, and they won't need to fill out any paperwork or get a lawyer. But as Lee Gaines reports, not everyone with a cannabis conviction will get a clean slate automatically. Imagine a large jam jar full of weed. That's about an ounce of pot. Under the state's new legalization law, people arrested and convicted of crimes involving roughly an ounce of weed or less will have their criminal records wiped clean in the coming years. But the law leaves out people caught with more than that. People like Matt, a central Illinois resident. We're not using Matt's last name to protect his family's privacy. When Matt was in his early 20s, he purchased about a pound of weed with his friends. Obviously, you buy it in a little bit 
bigger amounts, you save money. I mean, it's just business. After the drug dealer dropped it off, cops stormed his apartment. They showed up with about you know, 10, 15 guys wearing masks, assault rifles. Yeah, it was kind of terrifying. Matt gets emotional when he remembers that time in his life. He spent about two and a half years on probation, and his conviction still haunts him today. Matt is now a father in his early 30s. He says he's been denied jobs because of his record, and he can't get federal student aid. And then there's the stigma of being labeled a felon. It's embarrassing. I've had to hide it from my family for a number of years. They always wondered, well, why is Matt not going back to college? Why is Matt not getting a better job? Matt is one of more than 30,000 people in Illinois convicted of a Class 3 cannabis felony, according to state data. These stories are so common by the thousands. That state representative, Carol Ammons, a Champaign Democrat. People are trying to get on with their lives, but these records are holding them back. To be clear, Matt can petition to get his record expunged on his own. But he says... I, I, I honestly don't even know where to start. Expungement is a complex legal process. It can also be expensive. Ammon says most people don't know how to navigate it on their own. Over time, we're going to see that we need to do more to make it easier for people to get these records cleared. But Ed Wojcicki doesn't see the need. Wojcicki is the executive director of the Illinois Association of Chiefs of Police. He says local law enforcement agencies are already overburdened as it is, pouring over arrests records trying to find every case that may be eligible for expungement under the new law. It's, it's going to be a tall order to actually be able to accomplish what the legislation requires us to accomplish. And it's not because they don't want to do it. It's just because the task of that is monumental. Wojcicki also questions the need to expunge these records at all. He says criminal histories are valuable information. I think it's important to employers. It's important to society. It's just helpful to know that this is part of a person's history. But Matt says his cannabis conviction has prevented him from contributing more to society and financially supporting his family. He believes he deserves a chance to move beyond that part of his history. I want to be able to provide for my family, and I want to be able to help my family. You know, it's been held back for fucking ever. Matt has reached out to legal aid organizations, and he hopes to get this off his record soon. But he still wishes it were easier. Matt thinks the state should do more to help the thousands of people like him. I'm Lee Gaines. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt, and from the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.